Hi, this is Lisa from audiblemarketing.com. I wanted to show you how to mix those tracks that we recorded using the Pamela recording system through Skype. I showed you on the previous video how to record on Skype using Pamela and how to do your Pamela settings and specified particularly that you want to record your voice track on a different track to your interviewees voice track so that you could edit them separately. Now some of you have said that what you're seeing isn't quite the same. I do think that is partly because I appear to have a slightly older version or slightly different dashboard to, because I've got an older version of Pamela. But you should find the same options just in slightly different places. If you aren't then you probably don't have the advanced version of Pamela. There isn't much of a difference in price, so you might want to consider upgrading if you're going to be using it on a regular basis. Now, once you've recorded that audio, uh, Pamela will automatically save it for you, uh, usually in a file um, called Call Record. So within Pamela, which you'll find the Pamela file is on my documents within that you'll find call record and usually it's that gives it's saved as the date and then the name of the person on Skype the Skype username of the person you were talking to and various other information so you'll find it fairly easily now I've taken a very small section of a conversation I had on Skype with Alison from the SWBN the reason I've taken a short section is simply for speed of showing you how to edit it. Uh, the principle remains the same, but obviously if you've got big files, then they're going to take a lot longer to load up and edit. So I'm just going to click on that and click open. And at the moment we've got one stereo file, but on the left hand side we have... So coming out of the left ear you've got my audio, and coming out of the right ear, down the bottom here, that's Alison's audio. So the first thing I need to stress is if you are going to take anything out of your interview, you need to do it now. The reason being that if you wait until you've split the tracks and you only take it out of the top bit and not the bottom bit, then the tracks are not going to align right and so the conversation is going to be all out of sync. So for example, if I just wanted to take that little bit of noise out at the top, you also have to take the equivalent timeout at the bottom and press click. So similarly, if I'm tightening this bit up, take that bit out and you do that by left click, drag to the left or right, highlight the bit you want to get rid of and click cut and that will move everything across not just one or the other track. Then when you're happy with you know any cuts you wanted to make you simply go here this little arrow at the end and you split stereo track and that will make it into two separate tracks. Then because at the moment I'm still coming out on the left and Alison's still coming out on the right we want to make it a mono track each so we go to that arrow again and click on mono left click again, click on mono. So now we've got two separate mono tracks. Now I'm going to show you what I mean. If I suddenly decide, oh, I want to get rid of that bit that Alison's done there on that track. Now that they're two separate tracks, if I cut it out of there and click cut, I'm not cutting it out of the top bit. So all of a sudden, this bit of conversation, anything beyond that cut is going to be all out of sync with each other which is going to sound very weird particularly if you've got a lot of conversation going on so you don't want to do that so we're going to undo by clicking that button put it back in but what you can do at this point is if for example you can see here Alison's side of the conversation looks a bit louder than mine so I'm going to just left click at the end on this track highlight it go to effect go to amplify and just give it a little bit of a boost by about one decibel. Click OK and that's got louder but the bottom one hasn't. Similarly Alison's track if we zoom in a little bit you can see just from the little line before either of us start talking that mine's looking fairly clear but hers has got a little bit of fuzz on it. So 
we can get rid of that fuzz. We just don't want it that zoomed in. Just highlight a bit of it, a few seconds. Go to Effect, go to Noise Removal, get Noise Profile, and it will load up the noise profile that's in the background there. Make sure you only highlight a bit that has no speech in it. Then we're going to highlight the whole thing by left clicking. Go to Effect again, Noise Removal. Now it will remember that noise profile and it will use it to remove the noise from the whole track. You can preview it by clicking on preview. That will play a little bit, bit of it back and you can see whether um, all the noise is gone or whether it needs more removed or less. I actually tend to go for a, on the less rather than the more. That's simply because the noise removal process can make the rest of the track sound a bit tinny. So I don't want Alison sounding too tinny when she speaks. So just a little bit less. Click Remove Noise. It will remove the noise from just that track, as you'll see. And if we zoom in again, you'll see that both prior to us speaking, there's very little noise on that track. And you can listen back just to make sure you like it. And if you don't like it, then you just click the undo button. Very simple. And once you're happy with the whole interview track, you think it all sounds quite clear and nice and exactly what you want it to sound like, then you just want to mix it back together again. We do that by left clicking on the end, hold the shift key down, left click that one as well, both highlighted. Then we go to project, quick mix, and it mixes them together. And there you have one mono track with the whole interview mixed together. Very simple. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more information on using Audacity, make sure you check out all the Audacity videos at audiblemarketing.com. Just do a search for Audacity or Audacity tutorial and you'll find a lot of them there and that will teach you a bit more about using some of the different features of Audacity.